worship leader, welcome back to the channel. I'm glad you're here today. I have a special guest with us, Caleb from What's Worship up, Leader Coaching. How's it going, man? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm glad to have you here. We're here on YouTube. We're recording here. this a few days early, um, but this should be coming out Tuesday. And I want to get right to the point because we know the truth about YouTube. People click off nice and early. I know the people yes. watching today won't, but I wanted to have you on the channel because I know you're working on something and it's actually launching today when the video is today so i want yes. to give you a moment right up front to go ahead and tell us what you've been working on yes so i'm launching a brand new book I have it right here called house music prompts for the worship songwriter if you are a worship leader who writes songs for your church or wants to write songs for your church or you think someone on your team might have a gift for songwriting you want to call that out in them this book is for you like i basically tried to create a co-writer for people who don't have a co-writer mm -hmm. that's basically what i tried to do so like flipping through these pages you've got uh, a prompt on every page and then um some scripture to dive into some questions that are asked kind of um yeah it, i mean like i said co-writer if you don't have one uh you know i i love uh hearing songs written from the local church and i think it's an important thing and so um i want to encourage people to do that so yeah house music prompts to the worship songwriter over 100 prompts you spend the next two week, two years you know writing a song a week out of this book and um, i think it'll benefit your congregation so man that is awesome yeah. now where, where can they pick it up it's available right yeah. now uh, available right now go to you can search on amazon uh, any of my social media bios it'll be in at worship leader coaching facebook.com slash worship leader coaching um and yeah available on Amazon or worship leader.me you can find it that way as well website yeah, yeah, that's right. And they can follow you on Instagram. Did you just say yeah, that? Yeah, follow on Instagram at Worship Leader Coaching. Yeah. Very cool. He's also the author of another book called Becoming a Worship Pastor. Yes. I got this yes. one. I love this book. So if you don't, don't have this, me. definitely check it out. It's not too long. Very helpful. So Thanks, yeah, man. awesome. I remember this was a real conversation. Uh, we were on Instagram a few weeks ago and uh -huh. I was just checking in. I was like, hey, I want to have you on the channel. What should we talk about? And I, I mentioned, I was like, I'd seen you doing a lot of songwriting prompts on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, this is super helpful. I need help in that area. I am not mm -hmm. a songwriter and I find it very helpful. And I was like, I'm not even in the mode to songwrite, but I was like, man, this would be good to have all in one thing. And you were like, hey, actually, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, I wrote a book. <laughs> right. I was like, that's perfect. That's awesome. And I know that would be helpful for people more and more. I feel like the need for writing, mm -hmm. this is something I've been trying to, to think about. Like. I'm not, like yeah. I just mentioned, I'm not a songwriter, but a few times, even on this channel, I shared some videos where we try to get our team together, a few of us, and just go get away and at least practice the discipline of trying to songwrite. And there was yeah. a little bit of fruit um, from that. Yeah. And it's something that then the pandemic hit. And so we haven't been able to pick up on that anymore. And I, I want to, and I feel like as soon yeah. as I get this book, it gives me some somewhere to start. Cause for me, it's yeah. just like, the Bible's huge. There's, you know, you can start right. with the characteristics of God or whatever. And I just know something like this would be very beneficial for me and the viewers yeah. here on at Hey Worship Leader. So, man. Well, and that's that's absolutely one of the aims, too, is to help you, like, not only just to use my prompts, like, but to help you kind of see where to look for things, too, so you can get started. You know, uh, there's uh, it, just about everything is from Scripture. There's a few things. They're like, hey, look here to find songs. And because songs are everywhere. If, if you learn how to look for them, eventually you'll just start going, oh, that could be something. That could be something. That could be something. You just have right. to find it you know man that's awesome it gets yeah. me it gets me pumped so uh caleb you do worship leader coaching that's what it's called yes. so coach yes. me a little bit i'm a yeah. worship leader i need help yeah. bringing a songwriting culture to my church and maybe what would you what would you say to someone like me or just me <laughs> yeah so i would say um either start with like a rehearsal even like where you know at, so at the end of every one of my rehearsals um, I circle up with my worship team and we sit down for like five minutes and, you know, it's, that's a kind of shoot the breeze, tell people what's going on, you know, pray together, that kind of thing. And I would start there with just asking people like, Hey, is this something you're interested in? Mm -hmm. Like, is this something you guys would want to do? Because I've, I've been on worship teams before where I thought songwriting was really cool and everybody else on the team was like, right. no, I don't really care. And, and that's okay. You know? 
And then I've worked with worship leaders, too, who are like you, or maybe not a songwriter, uh, but you're like, I still want this to be part of my ministry. I'd, I'd like to dabble in it. But then there's somebody on their team who's like, no, I love songwriting, and mm. I want to champion this idea, and I want to go after it. Uh, so I would start with just a conversation with your team about, hey, is this something that we need to do? Is this the right time for our church? And, and lead that up as a worship leader, you know, um, yeah. and kind of... You know, if you believe it is, then well, let's start calling that out in people and let's start giving opportunities to write. So whether that's saying, hey, we're all going to get together on a Thursday night or because people aren't getting together right now, we're all going to hop on a Zoom call and try to write together. Or if you want to pair people off, say, hey, you know, you two get along really well. I bet you'd be great songwriters or here's a, a vocalist and a guitar player. See what you guys can come up with and give them just either give them a prompt or give them um a, a scripture to work from and say, hey, just see what you come up with and and take all the pressure off. Don't be like, hey, we're going to do a recording in three months. You know, <laughs> uh, just say, hey, you know, let's practice this because it's it's a fun thing. It's a useful thing. Um, you know, it, there's so many reasons for songwriting. We can get into that if you want. But like, um, yeah, I, I just give people an opportunity and see what they think. Yeah. Well, I have two thoughts. For me, when we when we did uh, a few times meet to songwrite, I enjoyed the experience of just making ourselves do it. I was very, un I would say uncomfortable. I mean, it wasn't awkward or anything, but it was like, I'm not used sure. to this. And it got me outside of my comfort zone. Something if, if people may resonate, if they're wired like me, is that I don't like being too controlling. But at the same time, when you talk about writing music, um, especially if someone else is writing it, they're like, Hey, I, you know, I, I got something. And then dealing with the awkwardness of, yeah, I don't like that at all. Or, right. or you come with something as a leader and someone, everybody else doesn't like it. You know, you gotta, you gotta build some sort of a culture first of yeah. acceptance and creativity. And Hey, it's like you said, take the pressure off this. This is probably going to suck for the first yep. hundred goes or something, but we're just going to yep. discipline ourselves to do it. Do you have any more yep. advice on that? Yeah, I think um, I, th I, I, I anything like that. Say it from from the beginning that like uh, as far as like we might not use this on Sunday morning. Mm. You know, have everyone know that from the beginning. You know, if I, if I say no, it's not because you suck as a person. <laughs> you know, it's because the song's just not where it needs to be at, and that's okay because we all need to grow. And we're going to grow together. Um, I think starting with that expectation of. Not that your song will never be used, but that, hey, everything's not going to be used. And, you know, I do that just, you know, to kind of give you a reference point with uh, when I'm auditioning people from the worship team even, right? I mean, somebody comes in, you know, playing guitar and, you know, I tell them from the very beginning, like, hey, you know, this is what our audition process looks like. And just so you know, not everybody makes it, you know, right. um, but there's always an opportunity to try again. Yeah. You know? And so if we're not there yet, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I think stay as encouraging as possible, you mm -hmm. know, especially with anything create, creative, like, um, you know, it, you've got part of yourself tied to it, right? And so, you know, uh, yeah. you don't know, just want to be like, no, that's awful. You know, stay encouraging. Hey, what if we do this? Yeah. And always try to improve the song, right? I mean, because if yeah. someone's coming to you with a song and you're kind of the hey, yes or no, whether it's going to get played or not, then if it's a no, well, you need to know if you're going to be the critique person or whatever, um, what needs to be shaped up on it? Where do we need, how do, what do we need to do to get it to that point? Right. So there's that side of things. And then I think of the other side and I think of YouTube or any kind of um, mm -hmm. putting art or something creative out in the world or at your church for songwriting, there's got to be some sort of layer where you're always improving it. But at some point it's like, you just got to put it out there. Yeah. Um, I wonder, you know, since I am not experienced in songwriting it, I feel like I would always struggle. Like, Oh, it, it's on one hand, I'd be like, man, this, it, we just need to sit on a little more. And then the other hand, I would probably just be like, it's never going to get any better. Let's just sing it. <laughs> you, right, you know? right. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know when you, when you know a song is ready or if, well with worship songs, I mean, you can kind of try them out a little bit, right? I mean, you could, it's you true. could, if you have a chorus that you think this could be something, but it's not yet hmm. tag it out at the end of, at the end of a song in your service and see if people grab onto it. Now that's a scary thing to do. Like, 
because you're kind of putting yourself out there. But I mean, if you're uh, if you're tagging any other song, you're not going to be like, hey, this is Phil Wickham. You're, right. just, you're not going to tell anybody. So yeah. pre- present it somebody else's song. It doesn't matter. It's a I worshipful heard. moment. So try it. Yeah, I was going to say that actually does relieve a lot of pressure because you're just you're not like this is a complete song. Hope you like it. It's like we're trying it out. Man, yeah, that's right. that's great advice, man. That's that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So you mentioned a few minutes ago, maybe we could get into it. I think it would be very helpful of giving us a few top three, top five. I don't know yeah. how many reasons why churches should consider songwriting if they're, if they haven't before, like what are some yeah. reasons for it? So uh, there's, a, there, yeah, there's, there's three that I've kind of uh, have been talking to people a lot recent about a lot recently. Uh, the first one is your church Every church that I've been a part of anyway, and even churches that I've like guest led worship at or just, you know, gone to hang out at has kind of a unique voice. Right. So there are things that your pastor says all the time, keeps repeating. You know, there are scriptures that your your church keeps going back to. Um for so I was at a church in Nashville for three years, and the there is once the John ten ten came up almost every Sunday. It came up in some way or another, you know, your life and life abundantly. Uh, here at, at the church I'm at now, you know, part of our uh, mission is uh, forging a, a reliance on God, and so that that word forge comes up a lot. Um, so there's these unique. Um, this unique language that comes up in churches. And I think it's just really neat for one, when um, you can kind of capture that Mm. as people catch on to that, people realize, Oh, wait, wait, this is the language that we use all the time. And so you're speaking in your church's voice. Now you can grab onto a song from Hillsong or Elevation or anybody else. And that's, that's one of the amazing things about music. Right. But, but something happens when it's, when it's your church's, voice so that's that that's definitely one reason that i just think it's super cool you know they yeah. were a unique part of the body we're in a unique you know fingerprint of jesus and so let's let's share what that fingerprint looks like yeah that's awesome man yeah i was thinking how special it would be I, i've been at a church where they did their own songwriting and it was mm-hmm. awesome as someone on the worship team getting to participate and like this is our song and yeah. i didn't even have I didn't even have hands in the songwriting process. It was just mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. this is our song and, you know, it was right. special and how much even more special for worship team members who have input into that song, how special yeah. it would be for sure. Absolutely. And uh, okay. So let's, let's go beyond that though. Let's go even to the church. And this is like the second thing that I really love about songwriting is it's an incredible way to pastor your church mm. um, where like, cause you, with songwriting, you can speak into people's lives So just like, you know, if you're um, maybe choosing songs for one week and you might, you know, hear something going on in people's lives. Okay, well, maybe I need to lead in that direction. I need to sing songs about reconciliation because I know that there's a marriage in trouble and there's, you know, somebody that's, you know, their kids, you know, doing something crazy or whatever. And so you're singing songs about, well, you can write songs about that. And then people can can see themselves in the songs that you're singing on Sunday morning. Now, I don't suggest you air everybody's dirty laundry or anything, but, you know, you can, you can uh, speak to situations that are going on in your church. And so mm. then it's not just the worship leader. It's not even just the band, but people are going, oh, that's me. That's me in that song. Yeah. And so when you when you're praying for something, you're praising God for something that becomes really real for that person because it's their actual life right. and you can really pastor your church that way. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and Hey, worship leader folks. I mean, that's one of the things we talk about all the time is how can we not just sing songs? How can we pastor our people? That's, that's right. awesome, man. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And the, the other kind of big piece that I really, um, encourage with with songwriting and or reasons for songwriting is um it's 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 a really fun way to study the bible is what i've found like uh, if i'm writing a song for me personally i do the same things writing a song that i do writing a sermon so i'm looking at different versions of the bible i'm reading commentaries 
you know, I'm pulling out different notes, different kind of nuggets of, oh man, that's really cool. Uh, and that, it makes it a long songwriting process, but right. uh, it forces me like to step into the shoes of uh, King David and the disciples and Jesus and uh, really consider, okay, what was going on around them? What were they thinking and feeling and try to capture that in, in song? So it's just, it, it's a really cool way to do that. Yeah, man, that's, that's awesome. Everyone who's watching, go get the book. I think it'll be very helpful. I'm definitely going to get mine. Yeah. So um, I want I wanted to ask you a couple just quick rapid fire this yeah. or that questions just to get yeah. to know Caleb. If they're yeah. watching my channel and they've never met you, they have no idea who you are. Yeah. Now's a chance to get to know you. Yes. Um, and then we'll, we'll get into a little more stuff because I want to ask you a little bit more. But this is the fun little rapid round. So dog or cat? Dog dog for sure yes yeah netflix netflix or youtube netflix netflix see i um, used to be like that i was i said this on the other video i would always go to netflix or hulu and we st i still watch stuff mm -hmm. from there but more and more i'm subscribed to youtube channels and i just like mm -hmm. i go to those channels because it's like i almost oh, yeah. treat it like tv now and i'm not talking so, about youtube tv i'm just talking about Channels if, I want, if I want to uh, learn something or if I want something on in the background, I'll do YouTube. Yeah. If I or like I, I'll listen to a lot of interviews like while I'm working or sending mm -hmm. emails or something, I'm listening to somebody talk about whatever. I do that a lot. But yeah, for entertainment, Netflix. Yeah. Phone call or text? Mm, probably text. Yeah. I always I, I said. Oh uh, well, I I I, <laughs> I prefer phone calls probably like to actual get actual business done or whatever. Right. But I like that I can ignore a text for a little while. <laughs> That's true. I was yeah. thinking like uh, when you text somebody and they immediately call you back, which I'm guilty of that a lot because yeah. somebody will text me, I've ignored it for too long, and now I'm driving right. and I'm like, I just want I just need to call them because I yeah, don't have time yeah. to sit there and have like line by line back and forth let's just get it over with and, and talk about what we need to talk about so yep, yep. yeah but but i'm old you know old school my oh, sister's yeah. like if i text you don't call me back that's not right right that's, that's not how this <laughs> works right <laughs> all right facebook twitter or instagram where you spend your your free time instagram, instagram. okay instagram yeah. i know i'm the same way yep okay apple or android apple apple yep okay cake or pie Ooh, that's a tough one. Right. That's a oh. tough one. Um, I'm probably going to go cake, though. Mm, cake. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm, I'm getting hungry. Hey. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I like this question. It's, it's two questions. So and I know I'm asking you right now. I didn't I didn't give him these questions ahead of time, but mm -hmm. either or, or if you have an answer for both. But your biggest aha moment in worship ministry where like something clicked that might be a piece of wisdom or and or your biggest never do that again in worship ministry moment huh. um i use my 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 probably the biggest like piece of what i don't win, know when i really figured this out um but that my job is to that worship leading is a pastoral role like mm -hmm. that was my biggest aha moment when i realized that like uh, that I get to help people understand how to worship Jesus, which is something that we'll be doing for eternity. Right. Yeah. So um, that's probably my biggest aha moment. Like I need to pastor people. I need to step up a little bit because I wasn't like, I was just, I'm, I'm singing songs, you know? Um, yeah. That's probably my biggest aha moment that I need to really learn how to be a pastor and how to really guide people, shepherd people in this area rather than just, singing songs on Sunday morning. I know that's something you guys talk about a lot. So Yeah. It, and it's such a good thing to remember because I think a lot of, a lot of people forget um, mm -hmm. even people like me, who it's something I'm very passionate about mm -hmm. dealing with different tech issues and volunteer struggles and all that stuff. It can be like the first thing to go out the window because you're right. just panicking about all this other stuff, but it has really calmed me down to realize that you know, there's something bigger going on than if someone plays the right chord or if someone's right. late and all that stuff can be frustrating and you can work on all that stuff with team development and, and good leadership skills. And God grows us through that as well. But at the end of the day, we're supposed to pastor our people and it's something yeah. much larger than just playing a good set. And I think, yeah, right. that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Something I, like I have to remind myself all the time, like a bad note has never stopped God from moving. 
Mm. Like it's never, it's, it's, it's made me mad before, but it's never right. stopped God from doing something. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, I have to remind myself that, that often, you know, it's not all of the, um, tools that we use right lights are a tool and the sound system's a tool and the guitar is a tool but that's not really what ministry is those yeah. things just help you know um yeah cool uh biggest never do that again moment never do that again i'm trying to, I'm trying to think of something I'm, i know i've had them i just yeah. you know um I know I'm putting you on the spot. I'm trying to think if, if you just asked me that question, I don't know what I would say. Right, I'm, the, right. I'm the one who wrote the question. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's definitely times where like I could have been nicer to somebody, you know, mm. on my worship team or in a, I told somebody to shut up one time in the middle of a rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to do that again. Like, uh, and it was in kind of a funny way, but I was, I was a little serious too. Yeah. So yeah, that was, a little on edge going like, yeah, all right, shut up. And like, <laughs> Oh, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done that. I had, to, I had to apologize afterwards and, you know, yeah. you know, well, admit my, my sins there, but yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. That's great, man. I did want to just close out our time here. Just asking yeah. you a little bit, a little bit more about worship leader coaching in general, anything else yeah. you want to say, maybe give us, why did you start it? Where are you at now? Is there anything new you're working on other than the book? Yeah, so uh, obviously the book, but um, what I've been doing a lot, I've I've had this as like an, a coaching option for a long time, and I've been doing a lot more of them lately, um, is uh, our worship service evaluation, mm-hmm. which is really where like you just send me a video of you leading worship, which um, I guess because of the pandemic, people leading online, more people have been like, no, I need some feedback. Yeah. Um, but that's something that I'm doing a lot of right now where uh, checking out your service, I'm going, okay, this is where you can really lead better. And it's not so much the music side of things. Like if I see something musically, I'm like, dude, you need to, <laughs> you need to yeah. fix that. We'll talk about it. But most of it's like, um, your teaching moments or your calls to worship or um how is your you know your your band leading people do they look like they're happy to be there do they look you know like they're upset on stage like you know things like that that and um and then kind of talking about how to improve those it's not just me you know going all right you suck at this this and that you know it's really us having a conversation about okay what can we do uh, to move our team forward and so that's that's a big thing i've been doing a lot of it's a lot of fun um so yeah, my worship leader got me if you're interested in that. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, other than that, the book's been a big emphasis right now and the yeah. podcast, you know, chatting with people, uh, different worship leaders all the time from all over the country uh, on the podcast uh, about all sorts of different subjects. You know, I really try to get local church leaders who are, um, you know, in a same, similar place as maybe you or me, um, kind of get their input on different topics so yeah yeah. awesome man well thank you for coming on the channel i appreciate you being here thanks for having me yeah we'll do it again i want to do a follow-up awesome maybe after i've read your uh your book and we've had a a songwriting retreat again or something yeah man we'll come back around but awesome awesome. man yeah well hey worship leader thank you for watching if you like the video please like it subscribe ding the bell all the youtube stuff and i will see you in the next video bye Uh,